Nelson. Whitey was the butcher. This guy was the dirt of the dirt. I wish the ground that man walked on. I thought he was perfect. What Bulger lived by was fear. People thought, he's crazy enough. He's going to do it. Whitey's just staring at me and just grinding his teeth. He said, I'll kill you. I'll stab you and then I'll kill you. I'm like, holy Jesus. 25 years where Bulger ruled the organized crime world. He was never charged with even a misdemeanor. Whitey Bulger faces possible maximum life in Welcome back to the Whitey Bulger Show, Season 3. We have a very special guest up next. Is this Crumb Snatcher on the line? Absolutely, Whitey, man. How's it going, brother? Good, good. Good evening. Happy uh, Happy New Year. Appreciate you joining us this evening. Uh, me, personally, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. I've been out in Cali for a while now. I'm a little bit older. I know exactly who Crumb Snatcher is. Uh, can you go ahead and you know introduce yourself for the for the people that might not have as much knowledge as I do on who you are and where you're from? Uh, my, my my rap name is Crumb Snatcher. My artist name, aka Chaos King Solomon, 
know what I'm saying, I actually came through the uh, through the uh, tunnels or uh, through the temples of uh, Gangstar Foundation. Um, rest in peace, my brother Guru. Shout out to DJ Premier. I uh, came through those chambers, and uh, currently I'm signed to uh, Wu Tang Management. So I'm working with a lot of uh, Wu Tang affiliates and Wu Tang artists uh, currently as we speak. And um, you know, I'm located out here in, in the New England area. I grew up in uh, Lawrence, and Worcester, um, Springfield areas. You know, what I'm saying also stopped uh, through Boston. You're know saying that's home base, that's the foundation. Um, that's pretty much it, man. I'm a New England artist, man, and just came uh, under the under the uh, the perfect. instructions and guidance of Guru. You know what I mean? Perfect, perfect. And uh, I appreciate you kind of clearing that up with without me having to ask a bunch of questions. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I I'm 35, going on 36. I knew you coming up as Crumb Snatcher. I read some information a few years ago that you were retiring from rap, and then I see that you came back as, you know, the artist's name is King Solomon now. Can you tell us a little bit about that transition? What was the change so that people aren't familiar? What, what exactly happened that made you, you know, go with the name change that you're doing now and performing under King Solomon? Uh, basically, man, it was uh, the situation, what happened with Guru, rest in peace. Um, like, he had a lot of confidence in me. He's actually the one that took me out of the New England area and brought me to New York and brought me on uh, a lot of global tours and uh, tours to the United States and, like, introduced me to a lot of artists, man. So I feel that I, I actually owe that to him, that he put okay. so much confidence in me. Um, you, know, and had a, you know, he had, like, faith in me, man. So, like, when I came back from Florida, because I, I don't know if you're familiar, I did the Training Day soundtrack, uh, the Wolf song. So I, 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 I was I was going to ask you that, so that's a perfect segue. So go ahead and just tell us a little bit about that. And, we'll, and please, feel free to explain your story your way because there's history to you. So however you want to tell us the, how we got to today, I'm down to listen. <laughs> <laughs> you feel uh, well, me? you know, basically, we uh, I was invited to uh, to do a song for the Training Day movie. We had a private screening. Uh, it was me and St. Lunatics, Nelly's Camp, and a couple of uh a couple other artists that was allowed to be able to see the movie in a private screening. So after we seen the movie, um, I liked the scene where he said, you know, it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. And, and then he was telling Ethan Hawke, you know, let me hear you howl like a wolf. So when I went back, you know, I ended up writing um, the song Wolves. So, okay. Yeah, man. So after that situation happened, I left to Florida. Mind you, I'm still part of the, uh, the Gangstar Foundation situation where I was on the album. Uh, the Moment of Truth, and the uh, Owners album. Yep. So when I came back from Florida, I heard about the situation with Solar and uh, Guru. And I was there when Guru met Solar, so I, you know, I don't want to get too much into the details, but I know that character, and uh, you know, I know what transpired when he met him and everything. And uh, So when Guru passed away, I felt it was like my obligation, man, to be able to continue the legacy as far as what I've learned from him on tour. Okay. Know, in the studio. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And to me, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit older, but you have a song literally titled Hip Hop. You know, if you type in Hip Hop in YouTube, a song by Crumb Snatcher will come up. So this is how instrumental this gentleman was in music not to be what they call today, like, you know, riding someone's whatever. But you, you, you've you been around for a while, man. You've, you've made some moves in music, and there's a history to you. You know, when, when people go through the annals or, you know, the channels of rap and they're looking back, there's stuff in there written that you've done accomplishments that can't be, you know, washed away. Guru, for example, for me, I mean, mass militia and that type of stuff, in 1998, I was graduating high school. You feel me? So I was driving around in my cutlass, banging that music as a white kid from the suburb. And <laughs> I guess basically, I went to a private school. I got into a little bit of trouble. So I met some kids that could come, from, come out from the city to, you know, play sports or what have you at a nicer school. And that's how I was introduced to your music. And, uh, you know, obviously, Gangstar, DJ Premier, Guru, you know, Rest in Peace, those are that's foundation of East Coast rap. And, uh, you know, you were, you were on the track, like you mentioned, 
Moment of Truth. What was the name of the track for that one more time? Um, the, the, you uh, have the verse. Pain. Make a pain, man. Actually, I got the hip-hop quotable for that, man. Exactly, and that's what I was going to point out is that you made a you know an indie move there where at the time it had all been all the major artists that had done hip hop quotables. You were the first one with your verse off that track to get recognized for that, which to me is huge. At the time, the label that you were on was and you were working with was that that was all under Guru and, and, and DJ Premier. That's correct. Well, I had actually came. Uh, through an independent uh, label called MIA okay. in Arts. And they're actually the ones that brought me to meet DJ Premier, and Premier introduced me to Guru. Got you. That's how I kind of was wondering how, because I know it said you've been, you know, a friend of his growing up, and to actually know how you introduced and met him and all that, that's, I mean, that's history right there. So, you know, you guys started working together. Obviously, he saw enough in you to put you on his album, and to, you know, build music around you. And then late 90s, you came out with, you know, some, some great records. I brought up the hip-hop one, the track Mobsters. You, you ended up getting into an incident where you were, you were shocked, correct? And then you came out with the song with DJ Premier, Closer to God. Is that, is that the correct kind of course of events yeah. to how, how things played out? Yeah, I actually um, got shot in a shootout in a pool hall in Lawrence. In Lawrence, you know? hey, that's the thing yeah, about Boston. Man. People don't understand is like Boston, the city is considered like a really small area. You go to San Diego, man. Bo- San Diego County is the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> you feel me? If you can't. You can't counted that much area around the Boston metropolitan area. There's just as many people, and uh, something that a lot of Boston people don't know. I mean, it's everywhere, you know, man. And, and any, yeah. Anywhere in the areas, man, like Lawrence, Lynn. Uh, you know, you know that Chelsea, yeah. all those other yeah. areas surrounding man is considered Boston. So you know, just out. It, 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 exactly, in our mind, it is when they do like their little. How many people live in this city? It, it's not even Newton, Cambridge. Those are considered their own little cities around, you know, Boston. But to us, obviously, it's a greater Boston area, and you all the way down in New York, and then traveling with Gangstar, Guru, DJ Premier. I mean, you've seen. I'm assuming you've been around the world once or twice doing this music thing over over oh, the man. years. Twenty three, twenty four countries, man. I've been all across wow. the globe, man. I'm blessed uh, to be under that um, tutelage, man. It was great. Nice. Um, now, I, not to get kind of off topic, but I did see some of the music back in the day was produ- some of your music was produced by the Beat Miners. Is that correct? Yep. Yep, Mr. Okay. Wall, DVD. Oh, yeah. N- nice. I actually was kind of interested. I mean, I. When you're when you're a kid like me, back in the day, we, we got our music from the radio. If we got tapes or this or that, it was like, oh, what's this? You know what I mean? Now today you get set on the Internet, you can find whatever you want. The Beat Miners, and, and, you know, I, I was really intru- introduced to their music again through the homie Cash, who's out here in California. But it's small how the hip-hop world works, live records, people working back and forth, them with Wu-Tang, et cetera. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is real hip-hop. And, and that's what I really think is missing. I was listening to your song today, you know, the track Hip Hop, you know, obviously the hook, you know, Miss You, et cetera. It's the, the synergy between a guy like Gangstar and DJ Premier making the music or the producers behind it. Um, for example, the two tracks you have coming out now with DJ Intrigue, uh-huh. you know what I mean? The producer has to be in flow with the guy writing the lyrics <laughs> you know that's what's missing today i feel like today it's all the beat is what's there but the lyrics are gone and then i heard your two songs in in some people that are coming out of music now it's like thank god there's some knowledge behind the beat <laughs> there's some lyrics to go with it or some some substance um and it, honestly is that sort of how you feel the state of rap is these days is that kind of why you were like Shit, I'm I'm quitting in a, a few years back, and obviously with the with the loss of Guru and everything, you just kind of wanted to walk away and take another capacity, and then something reignited you to to say, shit, I'm coming back. I'm putting some new albums out. Tell, tell us about what transitioned to bring you back to making new projects, working with Wu Tang management, and, uh, and and making these banging records that I just heard two of the songs. I was like, damn, this guy is, hasn't missed a beat. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, I was working. I don't know, if, like, if you're aware, like, for the past seven years, I've been working with uh, at a um, martial art camp with kids as a counselor. Gotcha. So for I'm the not past aware, seven so... years, yep. Yeah, like the past seven years, I've been like working with kids. Um, and I wasn't in too much of, of contact with the uh, guru, but, you know, here and there, we spoke. But then after he, like, passed away and the whole controversy and everything that was going on behind him, um, I ended up uh, through a mutual friend being called up to come see Rizzer in the studio um, in New York, me and uh, my partner, Jimmy Kang. Um, and actually, uh, we, we you know, we sat in the studio with Rizzer, and he was in there with the seafood and everything, and... Uh, you know, just sitting in there soaking up the vibe and everything. At that current time, I wasn't really interested in doing music, but uh, my friend uh, Jimmy Kang was ended up. He ended up being like the uh, vice president of Wu Tang Management. So I ended up doing uh, like an album for them. It was sample uh, issues, man. So we ended up like scratching the album, and I had to go back and redo the album. Um, so the album is already done. Like some of the singles we already released. The album drops in, like, February, whatever the situation is. Uh, either way, it might be my last album. Like, I love the game, but I just don't love how, like, I've been doing it for 20 years, my dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been signed <laughs> to Interscope. Yo, I've been signed to Interscope for 450 Cent and Eminem and all those guys, man. Like, I've, I've, I've walked my, my dogs, man, and, like, made my bones in this game, man. Um, yep. So I'm really... At this point, like if this this is my last hurrah, this doesn't work because I really wanted to quit. But then I said, you know, for, you know, people probably wondered why uh, Guru really was affiliated with me or why he actually signed me the ill kid or why I was traveling the world with him. So let me just show what he's seen in me. You know what I mean? So that's what this last album was uh, for me to you know to show like, okay, this is why this brother believed in me and he took me out of the hood. In Massachusetts and brought me to New York, you know. So that's that's real shit, man. And I appreciate your honesty. You know what I would say is when I listen to the music, I li- I'm on the West Coast out here, so I listen to gangbanging music, Crips, Bloods. I listen to East Coast music because I work with Jimmy. I work with Wu Tang. Um, you know, in fact, like I'm, I met him through last year's South by Southwest. We brought Capadon out. You know, things happen in business, but I know those guys push hip hop. They believe in the music. They, you know, they, they work hard. And, and shout out to him. Shout out to Wu Tang Management, RZA. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, Capadonna. I, I drove around with him for three hours in Austin, Texas, looking for food. And he's a down to earth yeah. dude. He's he's good people. You feel me? <laughs> so right, right. you know, what I would say is, I mean, I appreciate you carrying the torch for all the people that want real hip hop to stay alive. Um, we're gonna play a bunch of your tracks. I obviously want to uh-huh. talk about I want to talk about the new songs, Sword Style, by DJ Intrigue, or obviously oh, produced by oh, him. Oh, that dude, man, that dude is, is incredible, man. As far as the producer wise, uh, he's okay. a, he's a great producer. I, I like that that cat. He's a, he's a good brother, man. Did did he produce uh, basically most of the tracks on this whole album? Or, or is it? Is there other other producers on here? Tell us a little bit about the, you know, what what we're gonna find in addition to these two songs, production wise, on the LP. Well, he's actually the executive producer of the album. Gotcha. So, whatever he didn't produce, he's chosen a particular uh, producers. Uh, okay. To add to the soundscape, and I chose a couple myself, man, from overseas. But he's gotcha. the majority. You know, chose the majority of the music. Perfect, perfect. And just so people know, like, obviously you got to have a close relationship when we're talking about music-wise. When they hear these songs, they're going to understand why. I mean, there's sam- there, there's music in there. I'm sure you had to talk to certain people to get some of these sounds because I'm hearing, you know what I mean? Let's just put it to you that way. There's some, there's some swords and some ninjas going on that I'm like, I think I've heard that in a track before. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. You know what I mean? I'm sure you had to ask someone over here, or they even asked someone when they cleared the table, but the game is different today. You know what I mean? Right, but right. That, <laughs> that sound you have is dope. Um, they're going to hear both those tracks again, uh, the sword style and also microphone takeover with, with your man Four Corners. Um, 
Again, they're both produced by Intrigue. You have a certain sound, sound to your music. Um, I don't call it backpack. I don't. I, do you have a name for what you call your style of rap, or is there a name that you give it? Just classic. What do you? What do you? What do you consider it's yourself? Hard hop, man. Hard hop. Hard okay. Hop, man. Hard hop, man. It's, you know, it's 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 it is what it is, man. Like a lot of my music, man. It's like it's like street hip hop, but there's no curses. There's no. It's intelligent. It's intelligent music, man. It's intelligent street music. That's all it is. Real shit. Real shit. And you know, I appreciate you. Again, carrying that torch, coming out here, showing these young cats how to make real rap. You know, it's, 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 there's, you get the beat, you work with the producer, you write to it, it makes some sense. I mean, for instance, not to go back on it again, but the hip-hop song, you, you writing a metaphor almost like it's a woman when you're talking about rap and how your relationship with, is it, you know, it's it's a it's a deep song, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even though so, it's, well, Lottie, it's, I, I wasn't the yeah. first to do it. Common had did it prior. Yep. I I thought I just did it in a different manner. Um, yep. I, you know, I, I I just thought I did it in a different perspective. But you know, it, it it's not a topic that hasn't been touched on before. Or, or Real prior, shit. But I, um, it is what it is. Like I tried to uh, come at different angles, man. Like if you ever like go from album to album, like, you know, as far as an artist, I like to do music that I enjoy listening to, so you'll never be able to pigeonhole me into, like, okay, he's underground, he just does underground music, because I'll, I, you know, I'll fuck around and do, excuse my language, I'll mess around and do, like, a club uh, record, or I'll do an R&B record, whatever I like, I yep. record, you know? Well, real shit, and just so you know, we on satellite, but we can swear... Whatever you want here, I know we're not trying to oh, swear all the time, but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm like a I'm from Boston, man. So you as well, we kind of have that <laughs> swear like Dude, sailors. You know what I mean? In the back of the harbor. <laughs> real real shit, man. And um, <laughs> obviously, you know, I see that. Let's let's put it to you this way: I'm a white kid, Christian from the suburbs, whatever. But I've been around. I kind of fell off the block, and I had to go up and down to see where I'm, to get to where I'm at in the music game. And, and I have appreciation for the stories that you're telling in music today. How 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 are you living? Are you are you you living comfortably without music? You, you know, I know you said you have for seven years. You've been running karate type camp for kids. So is that what you do for a living, you're teaching teaching martial arts, or is that just you? You're you're straight with the music, so you just over here donating your time to the community right now. I'm but just but you know what? Yeah. Why to be to be to be honest with you, financial yes, or fiduciary uh, fiduciary issues is really minor. Like it, money doesn't make me happy. Being content okay. with my life and being content with what I'm with what I'm doing. If I'm giving back to the community or if I'm involved in, with the kids, if I'm doing something that lasts longer than money, you know what I'm saying? I really, yeah. I'm okay. I'm, you know, okay. I'm, I don't have a million dollars in the bank. I'm not driving Mercedes Benz right now, and I don't even care for that type of stuff. I'm comfortable being involved with the community and dealing with the children and giving back. For me, that's that's heaven right there. That that's that's the monetary value. Uh, nothing can beat that value right there. That's that's real, man. It took me a long time to realize kind of that myself. I work hard in this business. I know you do too. And it's like you can work as hard as you want to be, as proud of the project or whatever. But sometimes the money at the end of it doesn't even come. You might go out and everywhere you know they loving they loving Crumb Snatcher, they loving King Solomon. But you're like, damn, my check was not that big. But if you can feel like you know you're making a difference in in also. In the community, those are things that last longer than than any money that you can get in your pocket. And I appreciate you as, a, as an OG spitting some knowledge like that to these kids because, you know, it's crazy out there these days. Some of the stuff is going on. Underestimated passion In the booth blasting The mask on assassins Guerrilla tracks And pump breaks on they laughing 
I'ma get it, I get it, and y'all better know This year it's upgraded, created a better flow Let the cameras go, your picture's something real Without a record deal or chasing the pop of bills Still I will build, no frill, here it go Records rotating and spinning this like a miracle No karaoke, live on set Make my bones in the underground, dealing with a vet What else can you expect, I'm bringing a better way Got these rappers stuck in K like bullets that ricochet Kevlar rap, keep it going Covered most poisonous thoughts and I do it for the public. Flow beyond venomous, mix show radio to on block tenements. Say the sentiments, don't need the applause. Catch a mask up in your crib like it was SARS. Pause. I'm catching the breather. You don't need to be on mount just for catching the heater. It's Mr. Man, Tenor Man, call him receiver. Bastard four elements along with the ether. The mind been galactic, I'm in the Milky Way. Dawn elevator, just be on the filthy way. Off the hook, off the chain, off the hinges The music in your blood like I pumped it through syringes Know about the ninjas, the lounge in the night Katana as well, shopping, watching heads take flight Grip a mic and I squeeze till the circuits can't breathe Drop a flow, welcome to the world of real MCs Rather judge on the whips that's impressive Art form and skill to reach all the masses Tool against ignorance, mind just surpasses Lower forms and flesh of another Wisdom of the gods saying truth, that's your brother Humble on my travel, in the road of life Be pen and pad, studio suffice Gather all my thoughts, let it spill on the pad Mind get to running like a gold Olympiad had a chance to make a crack in the game Stab through the shell, now I elevate the name Long time coming, 20 years of making Do it for the fans, never forsaken Crumb snatcher gone, birth for K, yes New improved version, I guess you know the rest <laughs> <laughs>